could you spawn in in the mountains but you've got some great biomes around you you've got spruce you've got jungle it's a really nice area but all you've got are holes in the sides of hills well you can make yourself a really great starter base with just that i'm going to show you how don't you go anywhere Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, in my Starter Bases mini-series. So, you've spawned in in what is a really nice area. You've got spruce forest over there, you've got a jungle biome over there, which is amazing, you've got the mountains, which are going to be chock-a-block with resources for you, but you really don't know where you're going to build, and you need to build quite quickly because you want a decent base. Well, look in the background there. That looks like a cave. Maybe we could start our base up there. So you've climbed up the mountain and you've found your potential new home. Really great view from the front. When you come inside, make sure there's nobody already home. Make sure you light it up properly. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have face eating going on all over the place. That should be enough, at least for now. Now, this cave is only a teeny tiny one, which is quite interesting. So we're going to need to open this out just a little bit. Time for a little bit of terraforming internal terraforming which is actually a lot of fun and gets you lots of resources look we've already got iron down here we'd have collected out the iron we've got some coal down here we'll collect out the coal it's going to enable us to get plenty of resources for us to be able to move forwards with the build so let's just dig a bit out and when i've done it i'll be back with you so we have opened it out and we've also gone down to that spruce forest and gotten ourselves some spruce wood for this particular venture. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure we are protected. So I'm just going to pop a double set of spruce doors there and I'm going to get some spruce logs and I'm going to pop spruce logs right up and over either side of this door. So that's going to give us the necessary coverage and protection that we need. If I step back that we need to be able to look at, I've gone one too high, there we go, that we need there. So that gives us our entrance. We're gonna build a little bit on that in a moment, don't worry, but at least now, if anything comes along at night, we are not gonna get deaded and it is nearly nighttime. So now in here, we wanna decide how are we gonna roll this? Are we gonna create ourselves a truly caveman-like structure or do we wanna integrate the outside with the inside? And I much prefer the second of those two choices. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dig out this little bit of wall and I'm gonna use a little bit of spruce plank to create a separation. That's gonna allow us to have a bit of contrast on the, the inside fill, which is always good. We're also gonna be able to get some spruce logs and create some support beams because I personally would be really worried about cave-ins in a place like this. So let's get ourselves some support beams up there to make sure that this place doesn't come down around our ears. I also want to start interspersing the floor with a little bit of spruce wood. So I'm just going to do it at the front doors, definitely, because those doors need to have something done to them. But I'm also basically, in random places, I'm just going to pop some spruce slab just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So is that probably, let's just do one there. If we come up on the top part as well, we're just going to pop some spruce slabbage in. Now it looks a little strange just at the moment but trust me this is going to work once we're actually rolling so just get get the spruce slabbage in so now we've done that we've got our living space now we can start to add a little bit more detail the first thing you're going to want is a bed so on this little platform here it kind of lends itself to a bed we'll get ourselves a nice double bed and on the top above the head there we're going to pop our crafting table and we're going to put in a furnace because that works nicely and you don't need any open space above to be able to use them. We're also going to get ourselves some chests. So select your chest. We're going to go a chest there, a chest there and a chest there and on the other side as well. So we're starting to create ourselves some dump chest storage. This is a starter base, remember. So you're going to grow from this. This doesn't have to be all automated farms. Get another set of chests there and there and you're starting to create yourself some nice areas. Find yourself a bit of wall that lends itself to going downwards. So I think this bit of wall just here lends itself beautifully to going downwards and start to create yourself a downward slope. Make sure you cut out a hole that is three by two and there is always at least three by two in front of you when you've got your entrance down here. Cut those out, 
three by two, cut those out, three by two, and continue doing that all the way down until you get really as far down as you want to get, maybe a little bit further than that, like that. And then when you get down to the bottom, turn left or turn right, but given that the front of the mountain is that way, I'm going to turn left, take out another two by three, go too deep, and on the second one, start your downward stepping again. And basically, this is going to create the mine within your base. Once you've dug your mine as deep as you want it to go, come up and at the edge of the last turn, pop yourself a double fence gate. What that's going to do is if there's any spawnable areas down there, you're not going to get any mobs walking up into your house wanting to eat your face. You can easily get in and out, and if there's anyone there, you could shoot them with your arrows. Create yourself a little workstation area. Get yourself a little corner like this and dig out the blocks like that. And in that you can put in a couple of smokers, a couple of blast furnaces there. You can put in a loom. You can put in a cartography table and they will sit there very, very nicely. You can then above there put in a grindstone like that and also a stone cutter on the outside. You've got loads of toolage and loads of prep work there that you can play with and without taking up too much space within your base. You may have already identified an area in your cave that is going to be perfect for enchanting. Well, you might not have enough books to be able to do this yet, unless you've raided a village nearby, which is always possible. But once you have, get yourself a double row of books like that, and then a double row of books like that, and then come out to the side and shove another double row as well. That means you're in there, you can get yourself an enchanting table, and that will get charged up by these books very nicely. Maybe on your mining trip, you would have got plenty of iron, which would have enabled you to make a bucket of water. And also you could have got yourself a three diamonds, which means that you could make yourself a diamond pick, put some water on the lava that you undoubtedly would have found on your mining session, pick it out with a diamond pick and you've got yourself some obsidian. And what you can now do with the obsidian is make yourself your nether portal. Now, if you've not done it yet, that does not matter. All you can do is just, I'm going to put that there because that makes sense. And I know that's going to make people twitch. So let's put that corner in as well. Then get yourself two gates in front, the golden rule. Pop those there and they will allow you, pop that under there like that. They will allow you to block off that gate so you don't get pigmen roaming around and rummaging through your bins. Then light the feather up and you've got access to the nether. Your base is actually now pretty functional but maybe we can make it look a little better. We've created a nice sweeping entrance. This is literally just stepped slabs going all the way up in a kind of swirly pan. Stairs up to the door, open the door, and in we go. Make sure we close them off. We've got some nice patterned stone, different types of stone. We've got andesite, we've got cobble, and we've got stone brick. Obviously stone brick, dead easy to make, just four bits of smooth stone stuck together, which you can make in your furnace very, very simply. We've trimmed off with some more spruce wood, loads of spruce wood down in that forest, so it is not a problem. We've used two pieces of iron to make some shears to cut out some leaves, some ferns, and some grass, just to decorate the inside, because I think it looks pretty cool. And over here, we've created ourselves just a little farm so as we can grow some food whilst we're inside. We are completely self-sufficient. I think it is quite a handy little base. That is a really simple little base that you can make out of a hole in the side of a hill. Dead simple, a little bit of digging, and once you've got yourself going, you're going to have so many resources as a result of that mining activity that actually one part of the base starts to grow into the other. Helps that you've got lots and lots of lovely resources out there with jungle wood, spruce wood around the side. I didn't use any jungle wood, but you could do jungle instead of the spruce. It would be quite good, I think. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I will keep on making them. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye. I can't jump because my head keeps getting stuck.